Welcome back. Biblical Questions Answered. Today, we will be starting a new series that I am calling Precept Upon Precept, where I'll be going through Scripture verse by verse and finding the things in each verse that must be true, that might be true, and that cannot be true. I'll be starting with the Gospel of John, specifically well, the beginning of John, John 1, verse 1. And in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now, the first line is very important, and there are several things we can get from in the beginning was the Word. Uh, first, one thing that is necessarily true is that the Word was right? The Word was something that existed. It did exist, which is an important thing to take, take keep in mind because of who the Word is, and that would be Christ, Jesus. And the, and the reason this is important is because there are people who would say Jesus at one point did not exist. Second, the second thing you can see is that the Word was in the beginning, right? He was at the time of the beginning. And third, that the word was before the beginning. And you may wonder, you know, where is that in that first line? And, and the answer is, in English, the word that we translate was is, in, in the Greek, that word conveys uh, not only an action that occurred in the past, but an action with no stated um, beginning, right? It's, it's, it's sort of implied that it's something that has been happening for, you know, just there's not really a beginning point. It's something that's ongoing. It's an ongoing action that happened in the past. And so... Whatever the beginning was in verse 1, and I'll get to that, he, he did not find his origin in that beginning, because he was before it. Of the, of the things that are not clear in the first line, there are, there are two things. Uh, first, like I mentioned, the identity of the beginning, right? The, the verse doesn't tell us what the beginning is. But in the context of the rest of the chapter, it is clear that the beginning is the same beginning as in Genesis, which has some very interesting implications, right? Because the word was before the very beginning, which is a very big statement. The second thing is... The identity of the word, right? Now, I already said pretty much everybody agrees the word is, refer is referring to Jesus, right? The Son. And you wouldn't necessarily see it in this verse, but later on in the chapter, the things it says about the word and about, well, the things it says about the word makes it very clear that this is talking about Jesus. But... What, why does John call Jesus the Word? Why, why does he say the Word, and why, and why doesn't he just say Jesus, right? In the beginning was Jesus. Um, there's a couple options. I, I'm only aware of three. The first is that it's a reference to God speaking in his creation, uh, speaking his creation into existence. Uh, and there are other verses and, and that speak of Christ's role in creation, and the role he has in creation is very much the same sort of role as the words God spoke in creation. And I don't know how that connects exactly, how much of that is symbolic or how much of that is literal. I mean, it's difficult to know. But the, the second possibility is that it's a reference to the word of the Lord in the Old Testament, which occur, which, which appears several times in the Old Testament, and in one instance that I remember, appeared to Samuel when he was a, when he was a child, right? Samuel, Samuel, and he runs off to 
to Eli. It's a, so the third possibility is, is that it's a reference to the Logos, which is an idea from ancient Greek philosophy, which, if you look at, has several different meanings depending on which philosopher you're looking at. Because it's philosophy, of course, every philosopher has their own take on an idea. Uh, but it could be all three. You know, John may have been aware of... Well, I mean, he, he, might, he probably was aware of, of the, the Greek philosophy logos. He most certainly was aware of the word of the Lord because I mean, he's John the Apostle. He got taught by Jesus. Of course he's aware. Um, so, so it could be all three. They're not contradictory, so it's a possibility. Now, continuing on, right, the rest of it is, you know, um, the Word was with God, and the, and the Word was God, right? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Uh, two things to note. One, that it is necessary to say that the Word was with God, and that one cannot be with if they are alone. And also, that because the word is with God, it is not some, it is, he's not inside God, which is one of the reasons that I put that there. Um, that with is, you cannot be with if they are alone. Uh, the second thing to note is that the word is in some way God, because, and the word was God. Not a God, as a certain group, Jehovah Witnesses, try to say, uh, for the reason, you know, the, the reason the definite article is not included to the word God and this is their reason for saying, you know, it's not the God, it's a God. You know, the's not there, so it's just a God. Um, but in the Greek, if, if they had done the word was the God, it would have been all of the word was all of God, which is a problem because, because we contradict the previous line, right? Because if all the word was all of God, what is he with? Like he'd be with nothing. He'd just be by himself. So, so how is the word distinct yet the same? And, you know, we have language like that used all throughout the Old Testament, talking about, um, and of course, in uh, Second Temple literature, you have, you know, uh, this idea of a, of a dual to Yahweh type thing. So, and, and we'll get to those passages as I go through eventually the Old Testament. I have no idea how long this is going to take. But, you know, the answer is the Trinity, right? Which is that there is one God, yet three persons. Not one God divided into three pieces, but three, yet one. Uh, the, the next verse I will include in this video because it's covering the same truths, right? And it's, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, which the only necessary thing it is it includes is that God was also before the beginning, but that that should be obvious. Um, but so to recap, we have five things that are necessarily true with those two verses: uh, one, that the Word existed; two, that the Word existed at the beginning; three, that the Word existed before the beginning. Four, that the Word was with God, and therefore in some way separate to God. But five, that the Word was in some way God, and therefore inseparate. Uh, next time I'll be going through a few more verses, and I believe a few more necessary truths along with them. Now, if you have some, um, if you have some, like, a better name for the series, you know, besides precept upon precept, I think it's a good name, but... If you have a better one, please, you know, don't hesitate, write it down in the comments below. So, uh, I'll be signing off. See you next time.